Alright, so what were we doing? Oh right, I gotta get the alternative ending now. Right, we'll do that. We'll refit Amber and then we'll not go. There you go. Okay, it takes a while, huh? And I got some random scrap items. Nice. There you go, it is done. Incredible job, drifts by. Are you okay? Right. Leave me a warhead. What do you think of her? I did know. He'll do a great job. I believe in him. Well. I'll give you a minute, okay? I'm staying. Morris looks like he might pass out. Sleeper, are you sure? I are you doing this for me? I'm staying for me. Morris nods. Alright then, you're staying. He grins. There you go, see. I can do the alternative path. Ankita comes back across the bay. The final crate stored. You staying then, sleeper? I'm staying. He nods. Well, okay then. One less mouth to feed. She pauses. Look, sleeper, I'm not going to go back over everything that happened. She sighs. I'm trying to put that behind me, but... I hope you find what you're looking for here. He smiles and kicks off, gliding to the ambigris and the starward belt beyond. You both watch in silence as Amber drives fire up. I guess this is our place now, says Moritz, the weight of everything suddenly hitting him. Your place? But I guess it's... I guess so. He smiles. That's cool. It's ours. I'll help him out. You both stay for a while to watch Amber and Bliss and Ankita leave and then Moritz goes to the racks to finally implement a new organizational system and you head out, promising to be back to check on things soon. As you glide around the soft curve of the hub, you catch a glimpse of the distant stars flickering through the windows. They are beautiful, it's true, but by now you think of them as a distraction. In your time on the eye, you've realized there's nothing out there waiting for. Waiting for you. No fresh starts, no bright features. Just a whole load of problems you haven't found yet. No, your place is here, among the people you know and the problems you know. You wish Ankita and Bliss the best of luck out in the belt, but as you do, you focus on the eye, on the vast spinning rim that rotates around its hub, on the buildings and flashing lights on its people and places. This is your home and, for now, it contains all the features you need. Oh, we get, we have to do this again? The fixed stars. Everything can be repaired with enough time and effort. I got a new achievement for that. Maybe I will be able to achievement hunt, but I mean, I already failed one of my drives, right? The food one. I was not able to get enough food in the last episode. Because once again, she didn't wait for like 10 minutes for me to do like a little bit of work before she left. But whatever, maybe it is... I don't know. Did I waste any dice? I probably did, ever since I accepted that. I mean, I definitely did. I could have just bought scrap instead and given it to them, right? Instead of uh, having to sca scavenge for all of it. Yeah, that would probably have have worked. Although then I think I would have lost, but losing one dice because I used some of the scrap that I bought to heal myself, I would not be able to do that then. I'm sure that's fine though. It won't be that big of a deal. We're almost done with the credits though. And if I don't get one achievement, I don't really mind. Fine. I'm not going for a 100% run. I mean, I'll try, of course, but, you know, I'm not going to replay the game. That was always my, uh, my assertion. That's how games should be. You shouldn't have to replay it to get all the endings. I get the decisions are important or whatever. It will boot me out to the main menu. And then I'll go straight back in. Oh no, it will not boot me out because I haven't left. Right. Moritz, Bliss assistant. Next round is yours. Moritz arrives at the table with a couple of steel drink canisters. Typical of the hub's only bar, the gimbal lounge. The spinning one. He settles into the webbing beside the table and clunks them down onto the magnetic table. This place you have decided is ridiculous. If there's only webbing, there's no seats. I guess it's all zero G, right? A rapidly spinning cavernous sphere. This gimbal's weak gravity, just like the gravity at the eye's rim, is created by its gut-wrenching rotation. The interior surface of the sphere is the gimbal's floor, which descends towards the equator, where one long bar loops around the entire circumference. Yeah, that seems kind of horrible. 
Tumbling out from that central ring are an array of booths and seating arrangements equipped with all kinds of harnesses and webbing to keep customers in place. Those harnesses are there because the gimbal doesn't quite spin up fast enough and you as you watch and you watch as the clientele bounces towards the bar in lazy arcs or shift from table to table with graceful leaps. What are you thinking asks Morris noticing you staring out into the gimbal. What to do next? Morris looks out at the gimbal. I try not to think too hard about that. He says absent-mindedly. You should think a little about what you're going to do in the future. It's pretty important. Morris takes a drink and stretches. So sleeper, you stick in around? If you'll have me. Morris nods. Of course, I'm going to need help out in the bay. Morris rubs the back of his head. One cycle at a time. That's how we'll take it. Nice and easy. You aren't sure if he is talking to himself or you. We'll make it. He lifts his drink for a toast. To the next cycle, he pronounces and knocks it back. Later, when you are finally leaving the gimbal, Morris is still laughing. You help him out of the spinning gimbal and back into the hub, spend sending him on his way home to the bay. Uh, then you pause a moment to watch the stars as they spin and spin around the eye. You smile to yourself and think of Bliss and Ankita out there somewhere among these those points of light. To the next cycle. That's a drive done. Bliss is bay. I can pick up shifts here. Couple hundred pence. The bay is taking on low-skill repair contracts now. Morris is happy to offload some of the work to you. Okay, and that's it. Nothing big going on now. It's fine. Doesn't have to be. And ooh, good dice, good dice. Is there any scrap? There is scrap here that I can purchase. Is it worth it? I think it is. For a small chance that I can get a ship point fragment. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a piece of scrap. It's a ship mine fragment. Holy shit! Okay, so it's not that unlikely to get one. Give me another. They, they did, they did give me another. My God! Sell them all. I'll turn it into a ship mine. Get over here. Sell the damn ship mine. I'm rich. <laughs> Maybe I can start a bank or something. Loan out some money. Considering I have so much, but the spores need to grow, so I can't do anything here. She needs club heads. Once again, can't do anything there. Could grab some grove spores for next time. That is that is something. Alternatively, I could get some grow caps. Don't really know what I'll do with the gyro caps, but I can grab them. And tomorrow also we'll start uh, episode refuge. Yeah, we messed up flux a little bit, but maybe it won't matter. Probably will though, but I mean, you know, what can yet do. Now, uh, if there is like literally nothing else to do, I'm like, what about here? I can cook. I can take up a bar shift, get some cash money, but I don't feel like it really. I guess I might as well work in my uh, my business. It's not mine, but you know, it might as well be. You manage an M2 converter rewire in record time, giving you and Murit some spare time to chat about recent business. Give me some other business? Nope. We say chat. We say loosely. Here you go, cat. You're lucky. You're a very rich owner. Well, I guess I'm not really the cat's owner. I would like to be, but uh, it's a cat. We don't really own cats. Plus, this one is just a stray. So, oh, here we. Go. What the hell? The eye, a station at the edge. It hits you like a wave, a wire-edged breaker roaring inland. A white-edged break, breaker roaring inland lights back with the force of the entire ocean. The impact is a screaming brightness, blanking out everything. Behind is all. Behind it is silence. You float in silence, suspended. No, you do not float. You are the silence. It has filled you up. It has emptied you out. You cease to exist. Time passes, though you do not feel it passing. Then something flickers in the silence. And then something moves. That something is you. 
But I am the darkness. How could I? Okay, whatever. You open your eyes to a metal ceiling of flickering lights. You feel the floor around you, patting it with shaking hands. I fell down. You assemble an image of yourself lying on your back in a corridor. You shake off the silence and sit up. What was that? You glance around, looking for a sign for of some change. Damage on the walls, shouts in the distance, fire and fear. Nothing has changed. The silence sits around you like a fog. Someone is hacking me. You try to think, furrowing your brow. How do you think again? It doesn't seem so easy anymore. You force the pathways to light up, the data banks to grant access. You feel like a fraction drive starting up after a long shutdown in cold vacuum. In the wave. In the wave was noise, just as the sound produced by a wave raking across a pebble beach represents trillions of impacts heard as a single roar. So this sound was the result of trillions of electrons flickering in place heard as a single impossible scream. Someone sent some kind of interference beam or something, I don't know. A memory slash image comes to you, one from the moments before the wave hit. You squint as you imagine it, trying to cohere its blurry form, a broken skeletal ring, the eye, and then a vast arc approaching it, a razor-edged white curve, the wave. Something is approaching, it's refugee ships. The wave approaches the eye, the eye spins, turning each part to face that vast white edge. You recognize the ske their skeletal data cloud forms. The bright market, the low end, the green way, the wastes. Then, the wave hit, hits just as the flotilla, the quadrant, turns to face it. And after that, everything is silence. You open your eyes again. That is the epicenter. But of what? Is there like an event now? There is an active scene. Okay. That over there. I should feed the cat, probably. There you go, stray. And no one say I didn't feed ya. Even though I'm getting horrible rolls, it's fine. It's not the cat's fault. Crowen. What's up? Oh, it's peak. Even before you reach the cordon, the damage is obvious, or something did happen here. The blinking red lights, the drones, the tugs are all gone. Half the cordon's frame has also been shorn away. Perhaps through the impact of some falling ship. Something fell on this place? People pushed past you in the corridor, both Hervan staff and contractors clearing the cordon. Try to speak to them. You are met with suspicious looks and scattered warnings, but little else. From the equipment being carried out, we suspect this is no relief effort. Havans are pulling out of this section of the station. The further you pass into the cordon, the less people you see. You can see a few sections have been closed off, their bulkhead doors sealed and red warning lights puncturing, uh, punctuating the corridors. Punctuating, yeah. But otherwise, most areas seem functional. Suddenly, you feel a hand fall on your shoulder. Havan security, you should have known better than to wander into this place. You brace yourself as you turn. Sleeper! It's Peak. Embraces you as you turn. What are you doing here? Did you see the cordon go down? Did Esh speak with you? Peak glances around. And you can see they are panicked. Uh, where's Esh? I have no idea. Peek runs a hand through the, their hair. I was away from the ship and when I got back, she'd taken it and gone. Then I saw the damage to the cordon. You think she rammed herself into the damn cordon or something? Peek looks at you with wild eyes. What if this is some Harvanj attempt to clear the flotilla, to scuttle the refugee ships? It isn't. Peek pauses. What do you know, sleeper? Uh, something knocked me out. Peek frowns. I didn't feel anything. They pause to think. A signal that only affects electrical systems, perhaps? An EMP would have taken out most of the station, but... Peek runs a hand through their hair. I don't know what you are saying, sleeper. That doesn't sound... They look away down the corridor for a moment. Look, I have to find Esh, but I'm sure you felt something, but we can talk about that later. They set off down the corridor. I can't sit around talking any longer. Find me on the flotilla. I'm going to find a way to Esh, no matter what. You're going on the flotilla? With that, they rush away into the depth of the cordon, leaving you behind. Seems like you'll need to follow if you want to get any answers. Whatever it is, hit me too. What the hell is this? The cordon, Harvanj quarantine. Scrap for passage. You find a small shuttle scavenging supplies from the cordon to take back to the flotilla. They'll take you too if you bring some scrap along. I mean, I do have scrap. You hand over the scrap and squeeze into the crowded shuttle. Time to head to the flotilla. Flotilla access gain. So it's a new... Oh, it's not a new area. We just scroll. The flotilla. Refugee fleet. I can haul supplies. Getting the necessary supplies to each ship to meet their needs is a huge task. Joining the hauling teams is the simplest thing you can do to help. 
shifting shift systems and social structures. The only way to navigate the flotilla is by rolling up your sleeves and helping out. The wave hits systems more than anything, especially those on the ships. So there's a thousand tiny repair jobs to be done. Flotilla's friend minus minus energy. Okay, I mean I'll I'll focus on uh, interface obviously. I'm an interfacing kind of guy. I have a plus two, plus five cryo. You reboot the tanker's proximity controls, keeping it from drifting into other ships. The occupants are impressed and won't stop thanking you. I'm becoming a flotilla friend. Do it again. Another tanker. We'll do an endure one. Haul some stuff. You run some water out to a struggling farming a ship on the flotilla's edge. They are so pleased they reward you with some freshly cooked produce. Wow. Freshly cooked produce, eh? Boom, it's done. You reboot tanker's proximity. How many tankers are crashing, bro? I am now a friend to the flotilla. We have Peak and Soul, the crack captain. Let's talk to Peak first. As you walk into the bay of the climbing briar, the familiarity of the space overcomes any trepidation. It feels good to be back, and the return feels earned, especially after all the work it took to figure out a route through the flotilla's jumble of ships that might lead you to this blue streak. You see Ash and Peak immediately, sitting at the back of the bay deep in conversation. Their closeness causes you to stop, suddenly aware that you might be interrupting something private. Peak is gesturing widely as Ash stares out into the middle distance, hunched over. As Peak tries to get her attention, she spots you. Sleeper, Ash nods. Incredible work back there, she smiles. Sorry I couldn't wait for you and Peak, but the moment I saw the cordon go down, I had to get in here. So she left after the cordon went down. She didn't cause the cordon to go down, or so she says. Peak shakes their head, leaping before looking as usual. Peak smiles, but I'm glad we are all united, reunited. Okay, so... I mean, I don't think she would have caused such a massive EMP, but who knows. To be honest, Peak adds, I can't believe it. The flux event knocked the entire cordon system offline. The flotilla is free and her vans are backing off. Peak smiles at you. You must be our good luck charm. Flux event. That's what the refugees are calling it, Peak explains. Apparently, that's what they called it when it started happening around Ember. Now, what exactly is happening? Hard to tell. It's some kind of disruptive wave that only affects electrical systems. Peak strips in. Typically, systems are screened against radiation and interference, but this seems to be dulled, but not something by those, but not stopped by those defenses. So it's some kind of new weapon they're testing. Maybe it's some natural phenomena causing damage to electrical systems. A bunch of electrons, they said. Electrical shock. I don't know what's going on. Basically, the crisis continues. The cordon may be down, but this brings a whole other set of problems. Ash paces away. You should tell them, Ash. Peak glances at her. Please. Ash doesn't respond. Tell you what? You stare at her. You stare at her back, waiting for a response. Please, Ash. They haven't. They haven't. They shown they can be trusted. Peak nods towards you. Ish turns. Her arms folded tightly across her chest. She goes to start and then stops. You see. You can see the anger in her eyes, but you realize it is not directed at you or at anyone else. She is angry with herself. I bought weapons to the flotilla. She pauses, and now they are gone. Well, that's not good. You suddenly remember the sleek crates that were tucked into the bay, marked with a yellow sigil. The ones Eshe told you were just supplies. What do you mean gone? What do you think? Eshe snaps. Someone lifted them from the ship's bay while I was unloading the supplies. She snips. At least they are in the hands of the flotilla now. Peek looks at you. She knows this was a bad move, sleeper. I promise you. They glance back at her. She is just too proud to admit it. So what now? Peek looks at Esh. She finds them and she gets them back. Shouldn't we help? As she turns, it's okay, sleeper. I don't want anyone getting mixed up in this. This is my responsibility. She looks away. No, if the someone takes picking weapons and starts shooting the damn ring, <laughs> I'm sure Havanj will come in and just I don't know kill people. Plus, Peek adds, you and I have work to do. I want to understand the flux, sleeper, to study it. Peek's eyes light up. This thing is changing the changing the entire system, causing problems across the inner system, driving refugees off Ember's moons, and now it's here. If you don't do something about it, Peek pauses. It's a problem for all of us. I can see more immediate problems. As she sniffs, Peek ignores her. I've been looking at the networks, and when the flux event hit, it changed things. It shuffled systems, corrupted nodes, and broke open data stores. They take out a slate and show you a flickering polygon. Some of these fluxed nodes have appeared near the epicenter of the event, but I can't get access. 
you however i saw the way you worked with data when we were preparing for the run i think you can get into these things there are some kind of data that is there okay about the, about the flux i want you to find a flux node and bring me anything you can extract they come and go but most can be found in the barely functioning networks of the wastes peak pauses start there perhaps together we can find something that might point us to what the flux is and where it comes from all right they smile i knew you'd agree ash looks indignant don't waste too much time chasing ghosts sleeper there are people on this flotilla that need any help they can get I'm sure sleeper can do both ash peak smiles at you I'll see you here when you have something good hunting and they wave you out as ash storms away to make plans of her own All right so I got a new drive I do enjoy having drives study the flux peak wants you to help study and understand the flux event that occurred on the station find and access the flux node No hacking points on the ships come on man flux node slash That's a lot of slashes. Needs a five, a five, a six, a five, or a four. This node flickers in and out. Its position shifting slightly each time. Well, unfortunately, I don't have any good dice left. So, climbing Briar escaped XPR ship. Peak asked you to help them extract data from a node in the wastes, one that appeared after the recent flux event. And we have pragmatic captain Soul. Someone told me I should be thanking you. The voice comes from behind you, cutting through the chaos of the crowded cavernous bay. You freeze. It's the flotilla, chaotic refugee fleet. Don't be afraid now. I've been hunting you sure, but for the, all the best reasons. You turn to see bright eyes set in a rough face, framed in rusted metal. Helmet? Oh yeah, okay. No, it's not a helmet. It's a, like a protection thing from falling boxes or something. All right. Soul. He's old though. Soul. He holds out his hand. The other clamped firmly around a knotted wooden cane. Take his hand. He grips you firmly with a heavy and calloused hand. Forgive me. As soon as I saw you, I knew who you were. I mean, I am a sleeper. Soul puts a hand on your shoulder. I have been told the sleeper was part of that supply run that came in several cycles ago. He nods. A very welcome act, and we all thank you for it, even though there was no food. Walk with me, sleeper. Soul sets off through the bay. His partial suit hissing and creaking as it helps carry him through the busy crowds. You notice people making way for you and Soul, standing back and letting you pass. I mean, he is the captain. You pass a makeshift kitchen with a long queue outside, loudly complaining. Food's been scarce these past cycles. Soul admits, "What do we do? What we can with the stores and what we can grow on the ships, but it's a downward slope, I'm afraid." Yeah, that's my bad. So leads you out of the larger bay into a corridor lined with storage rooms that are now serving as dorms. You see someone filling a metal container from a standpipe. The water gushing out readily. So nods to the person as he passes. Just a little further now, so leads you into a freight elevator and whistles to some unseen operator to start it up. So see, yeah, there is water now. That is good. It jerks into life as you pass through the layers of the ship. You see people on every level, supplies crammed into every available space. and sparks leaping in bursts as the ship is reshaped and modified to sustain its population because they have enough supplies if a vanch were expecting an exodus from the flotilla the flux event has put a stop to that soul stretches some have crossed to the eye but many just but many just to gather salvage or score a hot meal so the pressure on our supplies is shrinking but not like i had hoped with the flux reaching all the way out here people are starting to understand that our journey might not be over Soul stares grimly ahead. They might have to keep moving. Suddenly, the freight elevator screeches to a halt, and Soul leads you slowly into a wide room of chairs and terminals, ringed by a menagerie, and with a glass roof above showing the distant hub and the far curve of the eye beyond. The people at the terminals nod to him as he enters. Boom! Chairs and terminals ringed by men. Okay, so it's like a control room. This is your ship. Soul nods. That's right. The pilgrim seed is mine to care for. He leads you up to a rallied, railed platform at the center of the room and stops. He chose me, so to speak. Well, at least a crew did, and I do my best to serve him. Soul looks around the bridge of the ship, a pained expression on his face. I'll admit that the responsibility isn't one that suits me, though we rarely get to choose such things. He glances back at you. But you, sleeper, from what I understand, you chose to try to help us here. Is that right? I did my best to. He nods silently, but I have to ask you, sleeper, why are you here now? Soul leans back, and you feel his eyes on you, assessing you. I want to know more. 
the flux event. I appreciate the honesty. I had figured as much. Tol flexes the shoulder that is free of the suit. Looking at you now, I can see that an event like that, well, it would have had a big impact. He smiles a half smile. So we don't, you don't need to lie about everything, you know. It is also to help them, but how about the flux? I have a thousand people here on the pilgrim seat sleeper, and there's thousands more out in the flotilla. He leans against a railing. A lot of them are looking to me to provide some future for them, some path out of this dead end we've got to. And this cycle, this very cycle, the thing we've been running away from, it just caught up with us. So these people are scared, sleeper, and they are looking for me for reassurance. And then on the same cycle, someone tells me they see you on board, a sleeper, the same sleeper they reckon that wanted so strongly to send a ship past a cordon to see us. Soul scratches at his beard. Right, I did do that. So the first thing I wanted to do was thank you for that, for your interest. He pauses. But the second thing I wanted to do was find out what you want from us. Soul suits, hisses and creaks. I think that's fair, don't you? Soul takes a deep breath. So what is it? Tell me about the flux, what's happening around Ember. Tell me about the flux. Someone at a terminal calls out to Soul and he shouts some orders back. He turns to you. Apologies, he smiles that half smile. I tell you what, Sipal, let's you and me make a deal. You want information, I understand that, but I have a list of needs longer than the rim of the eye itself, he grimaces. So you do some things for me, and then we can talk about what's been happening in this system, and I will answer all your questions and then some. I may be the captain of the Pilgrim Seed, and she is certainly the biggest ship in the flotilla, but I am not the only captain here. We have ships from here from each of the moons. We we are from Ember Hearth, but there's others from Ember Song and even Ember Step. The moons have been at each other's throats, sleeper. What with the pressure of the flux, the bad blood from the old days, so leans in. We aren't exactly all in alignment. What I need is a way to stop these escalating, stop things escalating. For the crews on these ships and their captains to feel happy and comfortable enough to forget old rivalries and past crimes. He flinches at something. You need to be united, I get that. Those from Ember Step, well, they've always been proud, but that pride seems to be a barrier to compromise right now. The last set of supplies I sent their way, they refused. Meanwhile, I have a supply shuttle at the doxing axle axis the Ember Song ships gather at, but they have taken far too many cycles to unload. Maybe if you're heading that way, you can look in on them. The Ember Song is stealing a supply ship or something? Okay. I am no politician sleeper, but if I don't, Soul stops, he leans back and flexes, he suit screeching, he groans a little and you see the weight of the flotilla sitting on his shoulders, the suit the only thing keeping him vertical beneath all that pressure. Look, you'll see for yourself if you go, meet the other sleeper, see what they need, keep them aligned, he speaks through the pain, his voice clipped. Are you okay? Hey, not really, but as long as this thing holds, he grimaces, I hope. Soul grits his teeth, you are what you appear to be, sleeper. He smiles his half smile despite the pain, because I am not sure I can take any more bad news. Plus there's plenty to be done here on the pilgrim seat too. If you have a moment to pitch in, there's never enough around here. That's something I have learned the hard way. <coughs> Soul settles onto his cane, the pain visibly receding. Alright, I have a thousand things to attend to now sleeper, so you'll have to find your own way out. And with that Soul sits at his terminal with slow and careful movements. You head back down in the freight elevator and as you do, you see again the layers and layers of chaotic life of this vessel and all the vessels of the flotilla hold. To drive. Support. Soul is asking you to help bring stability to the ships from Ember's Earth. Song and step with the flotilla. Pilgrim Seed. Heart survival, heart survival into it. Even Soul's own ship requires help, but figuring out what jobs need doing first and who to help is a challenge. And I can always give supply. Food is an issue on the pilgrim seed, even with agriculture on board. A supply of Matsuke will help fill the gap. Deep song and hearth. Stability in the flotilla means uh, relieving the pressure on refugees from all three moons of Ember. Whether Ash got her supplies through the cordon or not, pilgrim seed and the hearth refugees on it desperately need some help. Okay, so if I had gotten the food, it would have been 75% full. Instead, it is only half. Right, okay. I get the picture. Aki, Ember Steps, Refugee. There's more people to talk to. Pilgrim Seed, Ember Step, and Ember Song, Docking Axis. 
unfinished business. The more you offload supplies into the docking bay, the more attention your efforts seem to be gaining. Unload supplies. Sole shipment of supplies sits partially unloaded. The crew absent. If you want to help, the best move to finish the job. So they got they caught the damn crew. That's not good. Aki, Ember Step Refuge Sheet. Flotilla ship. A ship in the refugee flotilla. So they are people who are refusing supplies. They don't want anything. It's a strange sight given your time spent in the green bay to see a greenhouse soaked in red dust. It piles up along edges, gathers in curving waves and is carried by some unseen wind to whirl in front of the glass ceiling. It is a desert in miniature, a captured landscape of iron-rich sediment and unseen life. Beautiful, isn't it? The remark comes from another figure standing at the viewing window, so quietly that you hadn't noticed them. Did they just arrive? Or were they here before you were? Their cloth swaddled form reveals little. Looks dead. The figure laughs. It is far from dead. You catch a glimpse of a pale face among the thick material, dark eyes glinting in the red reflected light. Aki. Alright. They turn to you as the dust swirls. Aki. They smile a tight smile. You are not from the flotilla, am I right? I live on the eye. But that is not where you are from. She stares into the greenhouse. Everyone is from somewhere, whether they wish to be or not. The red dust glinter, uh, glitters in their eye. Whether it is a good place to be from or not. Guarded Ember Step Refugee. So they have a, they are growing something in the greenhouse. Huh? So they have food. Aki gathers her cloak around her shoulders against a cold. What brings you to the wind's long shadow? Soul sent me. Aki doesn't respond. She looks absent-mindedly at the dust. You are a strange one. Aki raises an eyebrow. I don't know whether to report you or send you back where you came from. She smiles to herself. Which is nowhere at all. Mm -hmm. True. You glance around the empty corridor, suddenly aware of how quiet it is on the ship. Unlike the other ships you have been on, the flotilla, there is a silent order to the wind's long shadow. And in this moment, it feels unsettling. Where is everyone? Aki waves a hand. Asleep, mostly. It is night on step, and so it is night here. She rubs her shoulders. At least for those of us who can sleep. Step. Aki turns away, irritated, eager to change the subject. You hear a creak as a set of shutters slowly begin to close across the glass ceiling of the greenhouse. As you watch, you feel the dissonance this place has with that word. There is nothing green here. A dust house, maybe. Hmm. It takes many systems to preserve this landscape, Aki begins. To simulate the wind, cycle the dust, layer the sand and dirt beneath. You watch the dust swirling. Systems that are feeling. What are you preserving? Are you growing something or what? The flux event, Ducky glances at you for a sign of recognition at this term, is eroding our ability to keep this place alive, to keep these traces of step alive. He smiles to herself. You are using a greenhouse to just keep a piece of desert alive? Come on, bro. Which is ironic, because when we left step, the flux had eroded our ability to survive on the moon. Now the situation is reversed. Away from the moon, its ecosystems are as fragile as we were, living upon it. Something catches your eye as the shutters darken the dust house. The winds, picking away at the dunes, begin to reveal something. A web, a network of thick branching forms. And then they close completely and you see nothing in the dark. There is something growing under the dust. Okay. Soft blue light flicker on in the corridor, uplighting Aki in a cold cyan. You have piqued my curiosity, but I am so tired, Aki shivers. If you do not have a purpose here on the ship, I recommend finding one. Otherwise, I am afraid you will need to leave. Make yourself useful and perhaps you will get another chance to talk. He turns. I would like that. With that, Aki pads away along the corridor. You stand for a moment in front of the dark dust house, trying to imagine the network of roots under the sand and dust, and then trying to imagine the moon that once housed them. Yeah. Dust house, Ember Step facility. I can do some systems repair here. The crew won't let you into the dust house, but there are plenty of supporting systems that could do with some love and care. Aki warned you that if you wanted to learn more about the winds, long shadow, you need to prove your usefulness, okay. But it is risky. There are safe options, right? No, not this one. Here. Yes, this one. Even Soul's old ship requires help, but figuring out what jobs need doing first and who to help is a challenge. We'll start doing that. Heart Survival. You join in with the team of Soul who are going floor to floor offering assistance. That time goes quickly and the work well. So I got two I think, not three. It's fine. The so Step, Song and Hearth are the three places. This is Hearth ship. 
This is step and this is song, right? Alright, makes sense, makes sense. Okay, so it's it's gonna be a task. But this is why I have all my uh, dice and my honestly ridiculous amount of money. Oh hey, you guys are here too. I'll buy some ship mine fragments. Sign of respect and goodwill. Boom. I always buy them out. Such a good deal though. That's why. Uh, we'll also eat. Where we make all our money. Incredible spiced fungus. Here you go cat, you can have some dinner. I have no more scrap to self repair with. That is unfortunate. We need to get some. Right. Feed the stray. I'll go grab some scrap. Nothing here, right? Nope. Okay. We'll go purchase some. Or we'll go uh, not purchase. You know what I mean. There's some to be found. That growing right here. Boom. Scrap components found. And then we can head back out. We have a four. Let's start with this. Let's start fixing the uh, supporting systems of this place. Prove, make yourself useful. You notice a bug in the wind cycling systems and manage to fix it. Aki gives you a knowing look. It seems like you are proving yourself. Well, I shall continue. Another bug in the wind cycling. Apparently the wind cycling system is a piece of garbage. I'll keep helping the pilgrim seed because it is safe to do this. Negative outcome. You spend your time pulled in all directions and finish only one or two tasks. The scale of the work is overwhelming. But it is still... It is still achieved. Neutral. There you go. See? It's doing something. Alright. We'll head back. Do we need to head back? I mean, I'm going to. I made the damn house for myself, so I'm gonna sleep in it. You know what, cat? No more two food a day. You're gonna get one food a day. We'll self-repair. Keep us in good, good health. In the pink of health, as they say. And we're back. Feed the stray. Go to Emphis. Eat some food ourselves. After all we've done for the guy, you think he would be cheaper? It would give me like a nice discount on it, but whatever. It's not my uh, not my place to judge. Gather some more scrap. That keeps me alive. And back over here. Okay, let's work on this for now. It's partially unloaded, the crew is absent. The more you offload supplies, the more attention your efforts seem to be gaining. Well, let's get some attention then. Someone comes to help you unload for a while, making the work go quicker. When you ask their name, they ignore you. What's going on? There is bad blood. Nice. Let's keep working. Someone comes to help again. And someone will help once more. I have a lot of attention gained, which is bad apparently, but we'll see. Docking axis, Ember Song Flotilla Hub. So I'm done with unloading then. There is a loose crowd around the supplies you have unloaded, and a tense mood brewing among them. You sit nearby, on the edge of the shuttle's docking tunnel, resting. Further away, crews from the Ember Song continue their lives as usual, coming and going, trading, discussing. There is a quiet efficiency to the hub, set up as a common space for the swarm of small ships from Ember Song that are part of the flotilla. Unlike Hearth or Step, there is no one capital ship for the, this moon's refugees, just a mass of individuals travelling in concert. The central ship, the big one, no? 
We told Hatch we didn't want their scraps. The jeering voice comes out of the small crowd nearby. Peter, Steely Ember Song Refugee. You turn to see a gaunt, pale man wearing the industrial work gear you have seen many of the song's refugees wearing. You hear me? The supplies are here to help. He smirks. Oh, how noble of you, coming out here to help us singers. There is a rumble of anger around the crowd. We agreed to join the flotilla for joint protection. We did not agree to Ember Hearth using the flotilla to secure their control of the moons. You realize Peter is addressing the crowd as much as he is addressing you. With the cordon down, our crews are more than able to acquire what is needed from the eye, what is owed as restitution for keeping us restrained. He pats one of the crates you unloaded. We will take what we need. Soul wants to cooperate. Soul is a farmer. Even the people of Song know that he was simply the sole survivor of Hath's leadership. His authority means nothing. Peter looks around the crowd. Hath thinks they can buy us, but we remember the past. A rumble of agreement runs through the crowd. He smiles them. He smiles at them. Take the supplies if you wish, of course. We are not wasteful. Peter approaches you directly. The crowd tentatively moves forward. And by the time he reaches you, they are already dragging away crates and distributing the contents. I am not one for shooting the messenger sleeper, says Peter as he approaches, but we cannot concede to Hearth here, not for a moment. I don't understand. I can see that. Peter sits beside you on the docking tunnel's lip. What was your plan, sleeper? Unload the supplies and wait for someone to start throwing them back at you? He nods at the crowd rifling through the crates, because that's what was about to happen. So I should thank you. Peter bows a little. My pleasure. What do you think happened to the crew of this shuttle? He shakes his head. They were chased out of this place. And why do they hate Hearth? We, Peter says with emphasis, do not hate Hearth. We simply do not trust them. Do you know anything about Ember's Moon Sleeper? Or were you planning to wander into this flotilla totally blind? An objective outsider offering help. He rolls his eyes. Educate me then. He smiles. It would be my pleasure. I am going to assume you know the basics. The gas giant Ember has seven moons. The three biggest are Ember's Step, Ember's Song and Ember's Heart. He winks. We can cover the four sisters next session. Okay, so the three of these three are important. Step, Song and Heart. Step was the first to be settled, a contract old Solheim gave to the terraformers Cybel Systems when they first claimed the Helian system. That's way back when. Step was the testing ground. Like most and like most testing grounds, it didn't turn out too well. A partial atmosphere slowly slowing off each orbit a dysfunctional ecosystem and a whole load of dust-clogged settlers. This, the place is a miserable desert long past its best before date. So Step is the ones who have the damned greenhouse, right? So Cybele moved to Hearth, where they redoubled their efforts. The, subs, the, the subsurface ocean and some balmy tidal heating helped, allowing them to build a real atmosphere, a real habitable world. A fact that the typical Hearth colonist wouldn't ever let you forget. Won't ever let you forget. How did Sibel achieve such a thing, you might wonder? Well, that's where we come in. It's that same old rule of surrogacy, the one humanity built our universe around. Peter claps a hand to his chest in mock pride. My moon, Ember Song, is a sulfur-soaked rock covered in volcanoes, tidally heated by its inner orbit to sweltering temperatures, exactly the kind of crucible you need to fuel a terraforming project. So they use it for energy generation, I guess. Energy industry fuel. Song provided the raw materials for hearth. Peter grimaces, willingly or not. And, I, and a crucible requires people to run it, us singers, born into a flaming pit and asked to stoke it so others might live in a paradise in the making. That's what we had to endure until Solheim bought everything down. Peter rattles off this speech from memory and you wonder how many times he has delivered it. No, Solheim, no contract. No contract, no Sibel. No Sibel means three moons suddenly independent. Peter shakes his head. It was a war sleeper. Sometimes hot, sometimes cold, and unsurprisingly, Hearth and Step came out of it better than us. Yeah, God, Hearth was a real damn planet. The Step was like a partial planet. Yours was just made for supplies. Yet, Peter holds up a hand. They need us, Sleeper. Always have. And so we are the linchpin. We are the center around which the moons orbit, not swirling ember. We've resisted takedowns, sieges, and expansions. And now we'll resist. Resist this. Half the people on these ships think the flux was caused by Hearth, intentionally or otherwise, and I have to say, some cycles I agree. So before you come here to hand out supplies, like a good soldier, maybe educate yourself. But what does that mean now? But you abandoned Song. And what does it matter now? 
Peter shakes his head. Do you forgive crimes against yourself so easily, sleeper? Would you return to the bosom of SNR if they send someone to collect? Peter stares at the crowd. Don't presume to judge us. I want you to imagine what it is like to try to live on an airless volcanic rock when every system that sustains you starts shutting down. He spits and wipes his sleeve across his mouth. We abandoned nothing. Some stayed, others left, but we will reclaim Ember as soon as the flux fades or ends. We have weathered worse. Don't you need the supplies? As I said, we will take what we need when we need it. Peter stares out into the axis. There is no authority that we recognize here. I won't keep you from the docking axis, sleeper. No one here has the authority to, for that. But watch yourself here. Try to remember that the eye is just another in the long list of people who have tried to control us. I understand. Peter nods. Then let it guide your actions. Peter sighs. Look, we are many and we have many needs. Ships come to this docking axis for repairs, for acquisitions, for friendship. You can provide these as well as any singer. I can work here. If you want to help, help in your own name, sleeper, not in that of hearts. Peter shakes his head. Carry that name here and you will lose all trust. We as we are. Act in your own name alone. Peter puts a hand on your shoulder and stands. I hope I didn't just waste my time here, sleeper. And with that he walks away, back to the shrinking crowd that is distributing the last of the supplies amongst the crews present. He watch them pass the food and water between them. No signs of conflict between the crews, just a careful distribution of resources. Peter chats with a few crews, each of them casting looks in your direction, ones that reveal little about the singer's intentions. You stand. It seems the tensions on the flotilla run much deeper than you expected. This won't be easy. Obviously not. They want spores and ship mines. What the hell? Bro, spores is so easy. Ship mines are insane. Supply spores. They want both? One of the ships is trying to establish a mushroom farm to help feed the crews. They are looking for spores to get them started. And one of the singles crews is looking for a ship mine to replace their flux damaged core. Maybe you can help them acquire one. Axis supply. As Peter said, the singers will only trust you if you act independently of Earth. Fulfilling supply request is a good start. But I'm gonna what I'm gonna do now is grab this uh, flux node. A four will work, right? And give me the flux data. Neutral outcome plus one flux data. Well lady, I have it. A flickering shifting fragment needs to be carefully decoded. There you go, start decoding it. Peek receives the data on their slate and begins work decoding it immediately. Peek, sleeper, come look at this. Peek is pouring over one of the displays of the makeshift decoding suite they have set up in the climbing briar's cargo bay. On the screen, a clump of data pathways, like an ingrown root ball, has started to untangle. All right. This is an existing node corrupted by the flux event. It's totally twisted up. They glance at you to check you are listening. But inside, you watch as the unwinding pathways leave behind patterns of negative spaces, like shadows staying behind despite their caster leaving, is a whole other data set. Peak's eyes shine bright in the pale screen light. The flux event somehow seeds this data deep into the gaps in the node, uh, wrapping them around it. So it's putting data in the nodes. Uh, what's in there? Not sure, Peak frowns. It isn't being very cooperative. You watch the screen, the patterns of shadows becoming obvious now as each layer of pathways is pulled away. The flux event itself really did a number on unprotected nodes like this one. Most of the ice systems are screened against radiation and interference, but these exposed nodes, Peak makes a ripping motion with their hands, torn apart. Peak points to a thick tangle of threads on the screen. Look here, it looks like it's been tangled purposefully, but it's actually that all the points within the node have been randomly rearranged, as if the node was a bag of ball bearings and the flux shook them. Okay, so it's everything that's been shook, apparently. Okay. The pathways tried to account for the rearrangement once the system came back on, hence the tangle. Peak pauses as the node continues to unwind. Although, Peak muses, it was less like shaking a bag of ball bearings and more like making them all simultaneously occupy a superposition of every possible position in the bag before locking them back into a new configuration. They smile sheepishly. But that's a technicality. Does any of that help us or what is the flux? So what is the flux? 
We know that it's a wave, one with exotic effects, that's all. Peek runs a hand through their hair. The question is not so much what flux is, but what is causing it. Where is it coming from, the source? Peek turns away from the screen, meeting your eye. And there is something else. They pause. Have you spoken with the refugees? A little. Peek lowers their voice instinctively. What they are reporting? Massive systems failures, cascading collapses of life support, of terraforming systems, total data corruption. Peek swallows. The flux shouldn't do that. It can fundamentally rearrange the structure of systems, especially those poorly shielded, but totally collapsing heavy-duty industrial systems, fail-safe and all. That doesn't make sense. So it's purposefully targeting them then. Those kind of systems are built for deep space, for full of flares and radiation. The flux might penetrate them, but any reconfiguration should have been repairable. Peek looks back at the screen, where the recoding node lies almost fully open. A shadow pattern of the negative spaces that existed within its scrambled interior darkens the screen, like a set of bruises showing the pattern of the object that made them. Right? I need to look into something. I have an idea what might be causing this wave triggering the flux, but I need time to research it. Can I help? Peek shakes their head. I'm sorry, sleeper, but I want to keep this to myself for now. If you need something to do, the flotilla could surely do with the help. From what I heard from Ash, things are tense there. Where is Ash? Peek glances around the bay. Must be out. I have been focusing on this, so I can't say I've noticed. Although the quiet is nice. They smile. Give me some time, sleeper. Peek turns back to their console. I'll have some answers soon enough, I hope. You take one last glance at the uncoiling node as you leave, the dark shapes it leaves behind, somehow troubling. You try to shake them from your mind. There are things to be done elsewhere. Alright, so she needs six days. A lot of time. Peek is researching something to do with the flux event and seems totally absorbed. They'll let you know when they are ready. Yeah, we gotta wait for them. It's fine, we'll wait. Until then, I guess we're going back, supplying them with seeds. I mean, these guys need the ship mind is like that's a lot of money, man. That's 150 cash right there, minus whatever, uh, or like plus whatever I'm gonna lose when I actually buy it, which is quite a lot. Really affecting my bottom line. Like these guys have no more scrap to give, so that is a problem. You know what, cat? You don't get anything. Use up our scrap of the day and end the cycle. One scrap per day, we need that much. Everything else we can manage. Good rolls, good rolls. You know, it could be better, could be worse. I could always buy a ship mine, but uh, no way I'm doing that. Do not be crazy. By the way, I hope the people pay me for the stuff I'm giving them. Even if it is like half the price I would get elsewhere. Still something, right? Still better than nothing. There you go. Another bug in the wind cycling system, and it should be fixed now. Aki gives you a knowing look, you're proving useful. I am useful. Am I not, Aki? I see you've been contributing. Aki stands next to you at the dust house window. I was unsure what to expect when we joined the flotilla on its voyage to the eye, but after the journey across the system, then the quarantine, and then the flux reaching all the way out here too, Aki stops herself. Thank you. She bows a little. The other ships have only been interested in sending us supplies, but we grow all we need. She gestures at the dust house. What the dust house need, that is a problem that concerns us. She smiles and turns to you. Shall we go inside? I'd love to. Aki smiles. Come. She taps away at a panel by the window. Seems only fair that after your help with the support systems, you get to see what, the, what it is that you are maintaining. Aki leads you to an opening beside the window. You pass through a dark changing room. You notice Aki is riding in on an oxygen mask and a visor. She looks at the swirling dust inside. Inside is just like Ember Step. Thin atmosphere, constant dust storms. Nothing that will bother you. She passes you a mask. The dust isn't exactly pleasant to inhale, however. So take this. You hold it to your face. 
she i don't need to breathe right she leads you through a short decontamination tunnel with its fizzing panels of purifying light and then through into the dust house immediately the wind and the heat hits you you feel the rough waves of dust scattering across your face and peer through the amber murk your feet slide on shifting piles of sand welcome to step or an emulation of it at least aki's voice sounds distant echoey the terraforming process only managed to provide a limited atmosphere around the moon one which is slowly escaping it's been like that since i was born so i got used to the idea you catch your bright eyes through the amber dust so did everything else that lives here you feel something hard beneath your feet beneath the sand like a coil of rope what is under the sand this is step silk it's one of the plants we established on the step it kicks away some red sand like any bast fiber it can be retted and woven into clothes i am wearing some made from it myself okay so it's like all this stuff okay it's one of the many species adapted to step since the solheim collapse which is why it must be preserved she stares out into the swirling dust it is as much a refugee as we are and the dust house hold hundreds of other species you look at the pale unassuming root threaded quickly through threaded thickly through the sand aki watches you silently had enough it will be easier to speak outside aki leads you back out through the decontamination tunnel which blasts the dust from both of you with a burst of metallic tasting air and into the changing room aki hangs up both masks patiently awaiting your questions why bring plants with you because they want to go back obviously what happened on ember step aki pauses pulling a shawl around her she looks small and pale inside its layers step was already a doomed world she sniffs when solheim gave the terraforming contract to sibel they believed they could build an atmosphere but the moon's erratic orbit made it impossible to maintain by the time of the solheim collapse the atmosphere was already fading and sibel's attention was on ember's hurts after the collapse sibel fell too its researchers scattered across the moons and any central organization lost since then my parents generation worked tirelessly to survive to adapt what we had to the failing moon the step silk the other adapted species are the life's work of the steps colonies so when the flux started to collapse our computer systems corrode and destroy our life support and what our water supply our agriculture we had to leave aki sits heavily on a nearby bench soon the only traces of step will be on this ship aki begins to cry quietly you are unsure what to do sit beside her you sit on the bench beside her as she sobs you understand why this ship why the refugees from the step are so different their world was already dying when the flux arrived ember step is a terraformed moon a partial atmosphere established colonies agriculture and yet when the flux event started its people had to leave you think of the eye and the delicate web of decaying systems it res- it rests upon what hope does a ruined station have against a wave that corrupts corrodes and collapses aki interrupts your thoughts rubbing her eyes not everyone left there wasn't room to take all the people and fill the dust houses My parents their friends and many others stayed she sniffs we carry the step for them perhaps there is hope we learn not to talk of hope on a dying world there is meaning for them and any future they can build with their time they have she stands up i wanted you to understand the importance of these dust houses of what they contain she leads you back out into the corridor if the flux events continue to reach out to the eye we need to build protections to ensure their safety aki meets your eye Okay. I can help. Aki smiles weakly. I knew it. You will be welcome on the wind's long shadow whenever you wish. These dust houses are already decaying. I have seen it. He stares into the dust. We had thought that they would last longer, but the last flux event help us Aki looks at you. Please, I will. When you are ready, we will begin the preparations for reinforcing the dust houses. We need to be ready for the next flux event. Aki's eyes shine with the last of their her tears. I am she takes a breath. I will see you soon. Aki drifts away down the corridor, leaving you alone once more at the viewing window, watching the ragged delicate traces of the moon known as Ember Step. The okay, Ember Step dust houses. I can care for the step silk. Improving the dust house isn't the only way to sustain the step silk. With intuitive care, the plant can be made more resilient. Oh, plus 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 preservation or plus plus with shielding. Aki has devised upgrades that will protect the dust house from both flux and their slow decay. He needs you to implement them. So even better than shielding it is to just make it more resilient. If the dust houses are to preserve their closed biomes, they need shielding against the flux and protecting from their slow decay. Well, we'll start with some step silk care. 
with remarkable intuition you not only support the step skill but harden it aki smiles when she sees the result and i'm done put the rest in here pilgrim seed support neutral all right well everything helps positive you focus on the most important tasks first to prepare supply chains organization and quickly see the effects okay only two more needed here very nice wait i didn't grab scrap i'm a damn fool actual fool end cycle will grab two scrap tomorrow and heal ourselves stupid so stupid oh that that perfectly works though Oh, do not feed the cat ship mind fragments. <laughs> that is not a good idea. Not edible for a cat. I don't think so anyway. Here we go. We'll need two of these. Get two scrap. All right. So we'll put the two in here first. At least we'll be done with pilgrim seed then hopefully. Neutral. There you go. Whether she gets her supplies to the cordon, pilgrim seed and the hearth refugees are desperately need help. Well, they got help. Toll finds you deep in the layers of the pilgrim seed, working on a patch for a life support vent. You hear him coming, his suit hissing as he does. I had to ask around to find you. He smiles. Seems you know the place better than me these days. I doubt it. Toll nods. I was on the work crew that built this thing, so maybe you are right. He winks. Toll holds out a hand. Stand up and let me see you. He pulls you to your feet. I don't believe we ever had a sleeper on Ember's heart. Toll looks you up and down. You sure do make me wish we had. Could have done with a few workers as good as you. Thank you. Toll nods. You're welcome. Seems like I owe you some answers, seeing as you've been working hard on the pilgrim seed these past cycles. He leans against a crate, his suit creaking. What do you want to know about the flux? Toll sighs. That's what I imagined. He scratches at his beard. I can't say I am an expert, but I can tell you what we witnessed on Hearth. At first, we ignored it. A few farms had their automation systems blink out. Lif lifter suits locked up. Bots reset their schedules. Nothing we hadn't seen before. But then the news came out of the Paris Zoo that they had been hit harder. The local network had gone down, and no one could get it back up. It was rough for a while, but out in the farmland, we were used to that. Passeru, capital of Earth, tens of thousands of souls made it their home. Soul grimaces. So it hits the most populated parts, does it? Hmm. Anyway, we thought the flux was a freak event until the day they got the network running again. That's when the cascade happened. System after system corrupted, data lost, and then another flux hit, and another. The bots were running circles in the fields. People had to be cut out of lifter suits like mine. And the city, I never saw it, but I heard from the others. Soul shivers. It only got worse from there. We couldn't seem to fight it. It cut us right open. That's what I know about the flux. Some folks might say that it came from the inner system, that it might be connected to some old tech there or something. But I never heard anything more than rumors. Toll scratches their beard. Sorry, I don't have better news. Toll shifts on the crate. Anything else you wanted to ask? There was something. Toll nods. What do you want to know about? Amber Hearth. Sure, he smiles. I mean, I spent my whole life on that rock, so I have plenty to tell. I'll save my life story for another time. He winks, but the short of it is that Hearth is the first of Ember's moons, the biggest and the most populated, which is down to the successful terraforming systems the Bell set us set up back when Solheim owned the system. Terraforming or how our relations with the other moons? How our relations? Soul smiles. Depends on who you've been talking to. You shouldn't mistake me for a politician, sleeper. That's for others to do. He gives you a look. But Ember's step was a test ground for the terraforming tech that Hearth is built on, while Ember's song was the extraction site for the raw materials and energy needed to make it work. You can imagine that might lead to some tension. However, Soul holds up a hand. Despite what people might say, Hearth was never fully stable. Soul shakes his head. Sibel liked to talk it up, but after they pulled out and Solheim left, our people discovered that they'd have to keep the systems running themselves, or the place would soon end up as dry as steppe. Hearth was good as long as the evaporators kept running, kept filling our skies with clouds. Even after the collapse, our people kept those things going. 
turning the subsurface ocean into a periwinkle blue sky. So smiles. Flux ended that though, and when they failed, the rains failed, and the harvest with it. Soul pauses. And soon you have a city without a way to feed itself. Soul shudders. That's when we, some of us, made the decision to set out on this place. He gestures at the pilgrim seed and look for another feature. Soul shifts on the crate. Anything else you wanted to ask? There was something. You. Soul screams at you. You want to know about me? I'm not sure that was part of the deal I was sneaking off, sleeper. Unless you were asking about this, he raps on the metal of his suit. In case you haven't guessed, this is the only thing keeping me vertical. He adjusts the shoulder piece. It's a lifter suit, made for working in the fields. We had to modify it so I could walk around after the accident. And that's all I'm saying, sleeper, because to be honest with you, I don't owe you more than that. You want to know about the flux, about Ember's hearth? Go ahead. But don't pry into my life and I won't pry into yours. Toll lets the silence sit, staring hard at the floor. The suit seems to loom over him, looking more like a burden than a support. With the bars around his head, he suddenly starts to think of it as a cage. Look, I don't mean to be rude. Let's leave it there. There's too many eyes on me on this ship as it is. And I'd rather just slip into the background. Thank you very much. Soul shifts on the crate. Anything else you wanted to ask? There was something. Soul nods. What do you want to know about? Something buzzes on Soul's suit. He glances at it and frowns. Looks like the time's up, sleeper. Soul stands, flexing against the suit. He takes his cane in his hand. Keep it up, sleeper. He smiles as he leaves. You're making me think I need to start making new plans for this place. With that, Soul leaves and you wonder what he means. As he creaks away down the corridor, you can't help but feel there's more to him than it seems. Saving? Saving. Very good. Okay. There's more I can do here? What are you talking about? Oh, no. Stability in the flotilla means relieving the pressure on the effigies from all three moons of Ember. But this one, pressure has been relieved. Good. Here we can do more into it. We do have plus two, so... Might as well do it at least for the day. Remarkable intuition. You not only support the subsect but harden it. And let's harden it some more. I have the scrap right here. Boom. Plus three. And so one more dice will uh, get preservation going. What is preservation about again? If the, the dust houses are to be are to preserve their closed biomes, they will need shielding against the flux and protecting from their slow decay. I'm just making the plants even hardier, so even if some stuff does go wrong, it don't matter much because uh, the ships are strong, or the, the plants are strong, I should say. Not the ships. Does it not say when I cross the rim? It does not, huh? And is anything going on up here? No, but I can always take the cryo if I want to. But that's the same as uh, the freaking... As these people pay me to be an operator, right? Yeah, midline freight up. Unless I mess it up and <laughs> steal stuff, which I don't know why you would. Doesn't really seem worth it at all. Anyway, we'll head home. We'll use some scrap to fix us ourselves up. Working on your own body is an unsettling but necessary act. You can feel the new component under your skin. Well, you're gonna feel some more new components. We're gonna end the cycle. Let a new day come in. Wow, with some horrible rolls. Feed the cat. And ready to go. Alright, I'll uh, see you in the next one.